What are we doing, Josh? Spackling. Oh. Well, in the baby closet. Yeah, finally, we're getting the trim done in there. Still working out here, though. And the railing is going up, too. Or I should say down. In today's video, we're showing how we transformed this boring old 1960s wrought iron railing into a stunning design feature in the entryway of this bi-level home. Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. More than a year ago, we started this project by removing the old railing so we could install new hardwood flooring throughout the upstairs. We built the top two sections of railing back in episode 15, and we learned a few things in the process. Click the card at the top to watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. Julie and Josh moved into the house and lived with no railing on the stairs for an entire year until we completed the major work downstairs. It was no big deal. We all got used to hugging the wall going up or down the steps. Our chunky posts started out as 1x4 pine boards. These boards are pre-primed and finger jointed, which means they're pretty straight and have no knots. We joined the four sides with construction adhesive and nails. We use construction adhesive instead of wood glue because wood glue won't stick to paint. I'll explain this later, but I decided to notch the posts to fit around the stair treads. To secure the posts, I would be using six long screws and two lag bolts. Probably overkill, but they'll all be hidden when I'm done. The post on the landing was secured with a 2x4 block bolted into the framing below. All right, we got posts installed here. And the cool thing about this is that I didn't cut the stair tread. So this post is actually notched around the stair tread. And that's a good thing because if somebody wants to replace this railing someday, they can do it, take this off, and the stair tread will be intact and they can put whatever they want here. So in any case, it's all attached from the side. The, and that's fine from a, from a uh, I should say, this standpoint. It's not gonna go anywhere in that way. But in this direction, left to right, it, it kind of pulls out. You can see there's, there's flexing here. So I just know that in days to come, kids are gonna come running down this step and their hand's gonna just pull on this. And I don't want that to happen. Now, the railing is going to be attached here too, so that's going to give it stability in that direction too. It's not going to move in this direction, but this direction, there's nothing to stop it. And so that piece of wood could break. So what I want to do is drive a screw up through the bottom of the step where you can't see it. And I want it to go into the wood on the side. So it's actually going to go into this piece of wood here. And that should provide the stability that I'm looking for. Now, it'd be kind of hard to drill at this angle 
In fact, I, I really want it more of like this. I don't want it to be too much of a low angle. So I've got this, this challenge here. So what I'm going to do is I've got this nifty little tool here that is an angle tool. And I've got one of these bits with a the uh, speed end on it. And that can go in here. And I'm going to do my best to drive it up as much of an angle steep as, as possible. We don't have any flexing and that is held tight to the step so that solved the problem and nobody will ever know all the attachment screws were hidden by one by six bases that were mitered and nailed in place The bases under the straight railings were made with three 1x4s. We used a sawzall and several metal cutting blades to cut the railings to fit between the posts. Yeah, once it gets going, boy. Yeah. Okay, Joel, that's all you. What am I doing with it? The tops of the railings were capped with the same three-piece design as the bottoms. That's one done. Too bad. Yeah. All right, let's see. We marked the top pieces in place to get the exact length and angle. We couldn't use the same three-piece design for the bottom rails going up the steps, so we used one by four by five quarter boards there. Five quarter is a little bit chunkier than the three quarter inch boards that we used everywhere else. We assembled the top rails with three one by fours using spacer blocks that purposely gave a little overhang. The spacer blocks were sized to allow the wood to cover the old-fashioned railing by 5 eighths of an inch. The only downside to hollow posts is that, you know, you've got four pieces of wood that are joined together and there is definitely gaps here that need to be filled with caulk and nail holes that need to be filled with spackle. So that's a, a before picture. And this is after. So, I mean, you could still tell that it's made with separate boards, but believe me, once it's painted and the railing's all here, nobody's gonna care. After test fitting everything in place, we removed it all for painting.
This is something we neglected to do on the two railings upstairs, and it was really hard to paint after assembly. because the railing is going to be there. One less hole to fill. I used a countersink drill bit to drive screws during the final assembly. Okay. The visible holes would be filled with spackle and sanded before a final coat of paint. We put dabs of caulk on the spacer blocks to prevent the railing from rattling in the wood. the painters have been here this is the second coat was done all the nail holes have been filled all the caulking is done and it looks really good the only thing left to do is the caps and for that it's a one by six and a two by six that has to go on top here and get cut and Josh is out at Home Depot getting that piece of wood and uh, then we'll get those things taken care of I chamfered the post caps at 45 degrees using the table saw. Then Josh sanded them smooth. To put the caps on, I just put a small bead of white caulk down here, and then I take my one by six, and I just eyeball it in the center, drive two nails down in, and that's it for the first part of the cap. Uh, very precisely, it always goes on when I want to record something. And the second part of the cap is very precisely centered, eyeball and then a couple long nails in. And that holds them in place while I caulk them and then they'll get painted and that's it. Here you can see the finished product, which perfectly coordinates with the black and white theme in their house. The old wrought iron railing is one of the only original features they kept in this home. What was old and boring in the past was now a design statement when you walk in the door. What do you think? Please leave a comment with your thoughts. We've done so much to this house already, but there's a lot more to come. So be sure to subscribe and watch every episode of The Living Flip.